Jetstream. Well, folks, that super jet stream crossing the Atlantic took its toll on the weather below. Hurricane force winds, storm surges, flooding, roads blocked, air travel canceled, major waves at the coastlines, and it's not done yet. Eyes open today. Meanwhile, this keeps happening. It's been quite the lopsided season as record snows continue to fall in some areas, while one of the snowiest cities on earth is left scratching its head wondering where the powder went. From powder to dust, how about this? Our solar system ejects a few tons of dust every second. Tons by the second. This is due to being pushed out by the solar wind and expansion and heating from the photoionization by UV light. Tons of dust per second for eons and eons. So when we say that the solar system interiors are more pristine and the interstellar galactic space is polluted with gas and dust and nova remnants, that's what we're talking about. We've got confirmation that the Fried Egg Nebula is a recurrent nova. They thought they'd spotted two shells before, but now even a third is confirmed. All the nova shells are said to have released between 30 and 120 years ago. Not a bad recurrence cycle for a yellow hypergiant star. And speaking of nova, long before the sun formed and the triple star system of Centauri formed and all the nearby stars, a supermassive star existed here and exploded. We see the remnants of it everywhere, surrounding the local bubble where our local stellar neighborhood sits. And folks, it's even shaped like a lobed nova. We see a number of these north-south blastouts, including this 2011 T-Pix recurrent nova. And indeed, folks, that's exactly what they're looking at as the shape of the local bubble. And speaking of lobed features around an axis, the largest ones in the entire galaxy are known as the Fermi bubbles, hot plasma heated to the point of gamma ray emission. Once upon a time during a galactic outburst, this would have been lit up, much more visible. And interestingly, since everyone who doesn't live at the polar region of Earth sees the galaxy cross the sky vertically like this, had someone been around to see such a galactic outburst and low brightening, it would have looked incredibly similar to something we saw yesterday from the lab and numerous central energetic sources in space. So who remembers Comet Ison? In 2013, during perihelion, it was met with tremendous CME activity from the Sun. Now, from Earth's perspective, the CMEs weren't aimed our way, but Mercury was in prime hit position. In fact, Stereo spacecraft caught the event perfectly here as Stereo A has Mercury in the field of view, bright dot to the left reflecting sunlight, direct CME impact. Stereo B even caught the eruption heading over towards that direction. This storm is said to have caused a field collapse at Mercury, allowing solar plasma to penetrate to the surface. Now, while Mercury's field is weak, it is there, but it was overcome in much of the same way that could possibly happen someday at Earth. We know the Carrington event almost did it already in 1859, and another 200-year storm or one of the more rare super flares would not only collapse the sun-facing field, but could arc discharge down with the force of Earth's field and that of the solar wind. Last but not least, we've seen hints of this before, and we won't get much more until...